So the next two days is actually about positioning numbers on a number line. Now, it's easier just to be able to order numbers on a number line, but to be able to position them really accurately, there's actually an enormous amount of reasoning, whether that's uh, thinking about addition and subtraction and multiplic multiplication as well. You'll do a lot of that in doing this if you do it really precisely. So we're going to have a look at the difference between positioning numbers just around about in the right place to actually be able to do it where you're really reasoning and it's going to help you so, so much. Really looking forward to it. Let's get started. So we're going to start off by looking at yesterday's extend task. Um, now yesterday, if you remember, we were making numbers with hundreds and tens and ones using counters. And so, for example, um, like let's say this, that would be, and, and again, say to the camera as we're going along which number, that would be uh, 201. There we would have 210 and so on. So that would be, for example, 213. Um, now the extend task was actually this. It was use 16 counters, uh, which I've got there, and make the number closest to 500 that you can. So let's have a look at the kind of thinking you might have gone al along. Like you might have thought, well, to make as close to 500 as possible, let, let's make the hundreds five, so it's 500s, and then make the rest as small as possible. Now, of course, what I can do is I can put nine in, in the ones, but I can't put 10 in the ones because of course then it makes one 10. So I could go for this here. And so the number that I have there would be 529. And how far away is that from 500? Well, it's 29 away. Now I could try and see if I can get closer than that if I had four hundreds. Now, of course, now I, I, I'm gonna make a number that's less than, um, than 500 so I want to get as close to 500 as possible so I'm going to make my tens as much as I possibly can so now I've got 493 and so now 493 um, I am actually only seven away from 500 and so there we have it the number um, with where, where I'm using 16 counters um, if we get nine or three is 12 and four is 16 um, which is as close to 500 as possible. Well, today we're going to look at our number system in a slightly different way, and we're going to look at how to position numbers accurately on a number line. It's part one of two. It's really good for seeing the relationships between numbers. There's loads of calculation involved that you might not even realise. Oh, it's really going to deepen your understanding of number. Um, so if we have a look at this number line, this is a number line like you might have seen normally. Um, and we have each interval of one on, and we go from zero all the way up to 14. And can you, you can see, obviously, how the numbers are equally spaced out. Um, now there, I, I've got the same number line, it's just that I've removed all those uh, intervals in the middle. So it's still the same zero to 14 number line. Now let's say I was positioning five, eight, and 12 on that number line. I had to think, whereabouts do they go so they're in the right space? Um, and let's say they were put here. Now, I know for sure that they're in the wrong spaces, um, but how could I tell? Pause the video, and how do you know that the five and the eight and the 12 are not accurately spaced at the moment? So I'm gonna give you an example reasoning as to why I know that they are not currently in the right spaces. If we have a look at this, 12 to 14, this is a space of two. And it looks about the same as this distance between eight and 12, but actually this is a space of four. So actually this space should be much, much bigger than this space. Um, so again, I know that those numbers, there's no way that they can be positioned accurately. One thing that is good though, at least I know that five is less than halfway, because if I think, well, halfway and where would five be? Um, so that's, that's one good thing. Let's have a look at how I might go about positioning those numbers if I want to be really accurate. I think the first thing is I would measure on and work out, well, that is exactly where seven goes, halfway between zero and 14. I think the next one I'd go for then is eight. I'd put the eight on, but I'd have to think, well, about how big is a one? And I think a space of one will be about that big when this space here, this is seven spaces. And so this is one of seven spaces. So I think it'd be about there. And next I'd go for the five. Now the difference, between five and seven is two. So if that's a space of one, that has to be two spaces of one, of two. So I think it will be about there. And the 12, well, I'm putting it here because five to seven, that's two. And 12 to 14, that's two. So they should be about the same size space. So there, I think that's a lot more accurate. 
Now, have a look at this example here. Which arrows show the position of 13 and 38? So one arrow shows where 13 is, and the other shows where 38 is, and two arrows are like the odd ones out. So which ones explain how you know? Pause the video. Okay, well, first of all, well, 13, I know it's less than 20, but which one? I've got to think, hmm, so 13 is 7 less than 20. So if that was 7, mm, that's too small a space to be 7 there. Because um, I think that 10 must be, what, about here? Um, so I don't think it could be that one. So actually 13, it must be this one here. And what about 38? Now, I think this one's a little more tricky, but I would think, well, 20 to 50, that difference is 30. Um, so half of that difference is 15 from there to about there. So that must be where about, let me have a look. I think there is about where 35 is. And 38 is a bit further along, so it actually must be the green one. Because 38 is closer to 50 than it is to 20. It's 18 away from 20, but it's only 12 away from 50. So it's got to be that green one, and I can reason as to how I know. Okay, so agree or disagree? Have a look at how 8, 25 and 85 have been positioned when I put them on. Do you think they've been done correctly or would you change them or move them at all? Um, so have a look. There they are. Now, pause the video. What do you think? Which ones, if any, have been positioned absolutely correctly? And let's have a look. Um, well, 8 it, it is less than halfway to 20, but I think, it, what, would 10 be about there? Something like that? I think 8 is too far back, because if we had 8 and another 8, that would be about 16, so I don't think that's quite right. I think I put my 8 about there. Now, I tried to put my 25 in the right place, because I thought, well, this is 15 here, so I'm going to split that 15 into three equal jumps of 5, so I thought that would make the 25 about there. Um... And what about 73 um, to 100, and there's 85. Well, 73, 85, that's a, that would be a difference of 12. 85 to 100 is a difference of 15. No, it looks about more in the middle. I actually think it should be slightly closer to 73. So I'm going to move it just about there. So for today's task, you need to just draw a straight line between 0 and 40. Um, and put 0, 1 end, 40 at the other end, and you're going to get 16, 23, and 31, and position them as accurately as you can on this number line. Now, in some ways, this is a straightforward task, and in other ways, it's a very complex one. It's, it's simple because we can all have a go, but to be really sure that you've put them in the right place, there's lots of thinking like we've uncovered, and that's the challenge for you. So, pause the video, have a go yourself. And then when you're ready, I'm going to take away the pause sign and I'm going to see if we can uncover some of the thinking. So let's say I'm going, well, is, I'm going to try and get it absolutely bang on halfway. So say there, I think that looks to me like that's about 20. And if 20 is there, well, I could make 16 less and 23 and 31 more. And let's say, you know, I could say oh, there, there, I've got it just right. Um, but actually, I know at the moment it, it's it's not absolutely spot on because look, that's a gap of three at the moment. I don't think that's three. I think that's too big because that's twenty to forty. So I think thirty would be about there. Maybe it's about there. And I know the gap should be just ever so slightly more, twenty to twenty three than twenty to sixteen because that's four backwards. So I'm going to go for about there. So thinking if that's seven, is that sixteen? No, I think they need to be a little bit closer still. Um, so maybe something like that. Now, if that's a 7, this should be a 9, 31 to 40. That should be slightly more. So I'm going to go for this. Now let me go, how about there? And let's compare. So we think that's 9, that's 7, that looks about right to me, and that should be 23 to 31 is 8. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. Now to check, I could look at this. 23 to 31, that's 8. So that should be double this gap to 16. So there's some ways you can check how accurately you manage to position those numbers on your number line. And for today's extend task, click on the blue link underneath the video. Um, and what you've got to do is see if you can estimate the values of the missing numbers in these blue boxes. So what could those numbers be? How do you know? There's so much reasoning there. I've deliberately not given you many questions so you can really think, well, what's that space? Um, 
between the numbers that's been given and then can you estimate the other one? Now I've put some answers at the bottom but again they're only estimate answers um, just to kind of extend your thinking. We'll have a look at the thought process behind that at the start of tomorrow's video. Good luck, I'm going to see you then.